So, hi everyone. Uh, Keen is my name. Um, I'm, uh, uh, I, guess, I guess, eight years ago when this conference started, it was basically me and one or two other uh, people who were uh, pretty frantic, trying to organize everything, pull it all together, and uh, we came pretty close to, um, we actually came very close to going to, to disaster, really, in the first conference. Um, but uh, we made it through anyway, and uh, year on year the thing has grown to kind of quite, quite, a, quite a nice size, so um, it's great to be here. Uh, I guess, you know, starting today, one of the things, uh, like, like James was saying there, that I'd like everyone to think about is, uh, think about everybody else that's at this conference, and, uh, um, you know, any, any downtime you get today, if you, if you spend, like, one minute thinking of other people, um, and why they're here and what they're about and how they can have a better conference and how they can enjoy it. Uh, I guarantee you, you'll have a better conference. So um, be nice to everyone and, and everyone will be nice to you. Um, so um, today I want to talk about uh, open sources art, um, which is a, uh, uh, as Brian said, uh, it's a topic that's also very, very close to my heart. Um, uh, yeah. So um, I guess be, before I, I, I really jump into that, uh, um, uh, yeah, I, I just want to give you a, a tiny bit of um, insight into kind of who I am or, or you know, uh, who Nearform are um, and, and what we're about. So um, we're basically, uh, we, we started up um, the year that the first NodeConf started up. Um, we're very, very excited about uh, Node.js. Uh, we're totally sick of the technologies that have been there pre-Node.js because they, they sucked and they were slow and they made us sad and, and Node came around then and we were very happy and, um, and, and we had this kind of crazy adventure where we decided to, to put on the first NodeConf. Um, but, but, you know, we were, we were trying to actually uh, make a living at the same time and it was actually really tough uh, for the first couple of years. Um, but I, as, as Node started to take off, then we started to take off. Um, so we've been really, really lucky. Um, we're, we're now like dotted all over the place. We're about, about 150 people. Um, we're, we're not venture capital backed, none of that kind of stuff. Um, and in fact, venture capital uh, backing for a company like us would make no sense because we are here to serve the community and we're here to give stuff back to the community. And, um, this whole idea that you know you've got to exit and lock lock customers into some open core monstrosity or whatever happens, um, it, it doesn't really fit with our values. Um, and uh, you know our values are very much one of being part of an artistic community, um, and and artistic communities tend to make uh, you know an emotional investment in the work that they do. Um, and they, they tend to have a value on the work that other people do and respect that value. So, um, so yeah, it's great to be here. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Impressionism and um, uh, almost, was in our, almost went to art college, actually, uh, after I finished uh, my secondary school education. And, um, yeah, Impressionism was just something that really got me. Like, um, I, I'd kind of grown up... Uh, and, uh, you know, teachers at the time uh, in art school or in, in art class would, would kind of, you know, try and get you to draw a very accurate portrait of somebody or, or you know, get, get you to, to, to study perspective and, um, and stuff like that. And I, I wasn't that good at that. Like, it was kind of like whatever, my, my ADHD started kicking off and I'd like want to draw a picture of a smiley face or something instead. And, um, and um, and so I, I, kind of, I, I kind of jibbed out, really, of studying art because I wasn't good at making photograph, pho photorealistic representations and stuff in life. And, and one thing that did, did occur to me at the time was, like, you can just take a picture with a digital camera and pour it into Photoshop. Like, why, why am I judging myself not being that good at doing that stuff? Um, so um, even though I didn't um, go to art college, I kept painting and... Uh, one of the big things that, that became uh, of interest to me was, were the Impressionists. And um, I, I think there's some lessons to be learned and there's some very strong similarities between the Impressionist movement in art and, and what's happened with the Node movement in, in, in software. Um, so um, 
there were a couple of things uh, that changed in the world that led to the Impressionism movement happening. Uh, one was uh, the camera. Uh, so so um, the camera became a thing. Um, you know, it no longer was a thing that artists would make a living from painting portraits of families and, and noblemen and all that kind of stuff because you, now you had a camera. Um, and, uh, and, and so I, I think the, the focus on that set of skills, um, you know, uh, became less of a thing because people are now starting to go, what, what the hell are we going to do with all these paints and cool colors and all this kind of stuff? And, um, and at the same time, um, the other thing that happened was uh, we had this fabulous uh, invention of, uh, of, of rolls of paint. Uh, which meant that uh, artists previously were only able to mix up paints in their in their in their workroom, um, but now they could go outdoors with paints and they could like sit in the light and watch the light change and uh, and start painting pictures and stuff like that and um, and um, yeah that 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 led to um, um, that led to the, the the impressionist movement starting. So um, it, it's it's quite interesting that. You know, in, in Paris, uh, around the time the Impressionists got, got started, um, uh, a bunch of people seemed to have ideas that were similar to one another um, at the same time. And, and they were lucky enough that they found a place where they could meet. Uh, they formed a community, uh, and they'd hang out in this there's a cafe in Paris. I think it's Cafe Goubois is the name of the cafe. But they'd famously hang out there and have, like, crazy conversations, like so passionate, they'd start having fist fights in, in the coffee shop on a Sunday. And, and they'd talk a lot about philosophy and art and science and all, all these kind of things. But, but it, you know, they, they were really, really lucky because they all happened to be in the same location. Um, and, and they also ha happened to have a similar type of set of ideas at one time. And, and then they went off into the countryside together and they started painting. And this, this vision of, of Impressionism um, started, to, uh, started to, to, to take shape. Um, over time, um, so um, yeah, there's some some pretty fine-looking, uh, uh, funky-looking, serious-looking, arty people in the Impressionist movement. Um, I, I like their style. I have to say, um, they all have something kind of interesting going on. And um, so, um, what, what? I guess what, what does this have to do with with Node.js? Um, um, when, when, when Ryan Dahl, uh, you know, Ryan Dahl, the, the inventor of Node.js, was once quoted as, as saying, you know, I want programming to, computers to be like coloring with crayons and playing with Duplo blocks. Um, there was a, uh, um, uh, certainly a, um, a, um, a new vision for, uh, for, for the ease and simplicity of, of building software and um, the idea of plugging things together and, and, and building things really, really quickly. And, um, as a vision, um, I, I think it's quite analogous to, uh, you know, getting new art materials, um, which enables you to, to express yourself in a much, like, easier way, a more iterative way. Um, so, um, if you think about uh, some of the, the factors involved in uh, Node.js becoming a thing, uh, first of all, we have this, 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 this fabulous thing called the internet uh, and JavaScript and... Uh, um, and, and the ability for people to connect and collaborate on something when they're not literally sitting in the same room as one another. And uh, I think that's, that's, that's really one of the big opportunities uh, for, for, as an artistic uh, community for the no community um, and future software communities that, you know, unlike the Impressionists, we don't have to all live in Paris and, and, and hang out in the same coffee shop. Like, you know, people would hang out on StackVM um, a, a lot of, a lot of um, individuals who look quite like the people on the last slide would hang out there and come up with crazy ideas and, and just, just get on with it and build it. Um, the, other, the other thing that, that, that uh, obviously was very important is, you know, Node is uh, the first programming language to um, emerge post GitHub becoming a thing. Um, so the idea that people can share and collaborate and, and, and see what one, other, one another are doing um, instantly all over the world is, is really, really powerful. Um, so um, I think uh, the, the, one, of the, one of the really big differences um, um, in terms of, of thinking about um, 
uh, the creation of works and the creation of a, a piece of artwork um, from, from uh, you know, 10 or 15 years ago and now is that uh, the ownership model is totally different. So um, with Node.js, we have lots of modules nested inside other modules, huge dependency trees, and, and, and as a collective, um, uh, there's huge value in, in the ecosystem. Uh, there's huge value in, in, in works that are created. Uh, but, but the value is more analogous to a tapestry uh, of, of people's effort intertwined and woven together uh, to create something. Um, and um, in terms of that, um, we, we, we have um, also some very interesting individuals, um, a number of which are here, I believe, um, who um, you know, I, I think are as cool as the Impressionists. Uh, if not cooler, um, you know, you, you have, you have uh, communities of people who work on this uh, technology and, and work on all these things, not because uh, they're being told to do it by their boss. They're, be, they're, they're doing it because they really have something inside that they're trying to express. And, and, and the, um, the, the sensibilities, the emotional attachment, uh, the people who do things because of a passionate uh, belief is, is much different than ones where uh, it's a job. Um, and I think that's always something that's really important uh, for people to think about, um, especially with, with something like the Node community, that, that there, are, there are people, there are artists inside the community who have given themselves to this. Um, and so we want to try and find ways, that, any way we can, to try and respect their work and to support what they're doing, uh, because it is quite an interesting um, thing that's happened in the world. This, this is an evolution that is not uh, a controlled evolution. It, it's, it's an evolution that's happened uh, in, in quite an uncontrolled way. Um, and that's exciting because you, you just don't know what's going to happen in the future, but uh, you know, there are good people behind it and, and it's something we should support. Um, so in, in terms of um, my role and our role uh, in this, um, uh, I, li I like to think of this conference as a Petri dish. Um, and um, a Petri dish is obviously a, an, an environment where uh, if, if various like bacteria, I'm not, I'm not gonna call you guys bacteria, but like if, if you get like, uh, you know, different people from all over the world into an environment whereby they, they're, they're, they're safe to communicate, um, there, there's mutual respect there, uh, and, and they've got time and space to uh, to, to talk about stuff, then, then interesting things can grow out of it. And, um, and that, that, that's my role as, as somebody um, that's been involved in the community, is, is I, I actually get a real kick uh, to, to see at the end of a conference or uh, a meetup or whatever, like you know, if I'm there 12 months later and somebody has, a couple of people that came here have started a new project and they found something new in their lives or, um, or you know, people have, have got a new direction from this, that, that's success for me. I get a real kick out of that. Um, and it, it's actually quite interesting. Um, one, one of the sponsors uh, this year, Skycatch, uh, I don't know if Reza is there somewhere. Uh, Reza there? No. Um, so actually the first conference that we ever ran, which was in 2012, uh, this is the conference where we, we almost went bankrupt. Um, we, we, we ran it in the Guinness Storehouse, which is the Guinness factory in Dublin. Uh, myself and my, my co-founder got a personal bank loan of 50,000 50, euros and decided to run a conference 14 weeks before the conference. And we eventually had all these confused people from Silicon Valley and all over the world in this room in the Guinness storehouse going, who the heck are you guys? And, uh, and they were like, this is cool, we're doing a conference in the Guinness factory. Um, and um, on, the, on the final day of the conference, uh, Emily Rose, who, who couldn't make it here, um, had a smoke machine uh, which she smuggled in for her demo. Um, and the smoke machine was supposed to be like this size, kind of an IoT disco type thing, but she smuggled in one kind of this size. And uh, of course it got stuck on on and the entire place filled up with like smoke. And they had, to, they had to evacuate the room and they had to disable the fire alarms in the storehouse. And we, we were like that far away from the sprinkler system going off and we had no insurance so everyone's laptop would have got fried and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, um, but actually the, the, the interesting thing was that the day after um, uh, that, that particular uh, spectacle. Uh, um, some, some folks that were there ran an event, uh, a node copter event. Um, so if anyone remembers uh, Felix Geisendorfer, uh, Felix GE, or 
Um, back back in 2012, people were buying Parity or drones, and uh, they were they were able to get a REPL up and running, and you could you could like JavaScript control the drone, and and of course the event-driven model was really really useful for doing things with with drones that were flying around the place. So. Uh, we did a hack event the next day, and one of the attendees, who was a conference speaker at that time, um, was sitting at the hack event, and I could I could just see the wheels were going off in his head, like, and he was his mind was blown by, by this stuff. And uh, um, about about six months later, then he announced he'd started a company called Skycatch, um, and uh, you know, seven or eight years later, like they're they're all over the world, they're doing uh, really interesting things, and that that's great, like you know, it's really interesting. Because, because fundamentally what happened was we got different people, different ideas um, from all over the world into one room and, and the lights went off for somebody and uh, that changed with their, their direction in life and changed what they're thinking about. And, and, and that's, that's, to me, a success. Um, it's a picture of a, uh, an impoverished artist. Um, I, I actually, you know, I was, was reflecting on this picture lately. I was thinking, I actually, that, it looks kind of comfy. I wouldn't mind <laughs> sitting in a bed with loads of blankets and writing for the day. But, um, but, but there, there is a point where uh, a lot of people that, that are artists um, uh, in the open source and software community uh, are not particularly good at, at, at being able to, you know, put food on the table or, uh, you know, uh, do all that real world stuff. And, um, uh, you know, I, I think it's important for us to, everyone to, to kind of think about that and, and try and recognize it. And um, we're, we're, in this, um, we're, in, we're in this position at the moment where, uh, you know, funding for open source and, and, and uh, communities and contributors and all that stuff is really broken. Um, and, um, you know, we really need to come up with new ways of thinking about how we can support contributors, uh, communities, all that kind of stuff. At the moment, um, um, you know, we really are in a, in a very uh, primitive place. So, you know, if, if you're lucky, if, if you write an open source project and people like it, if you're really, really lucky, somebody might give you a job and give you, like, some time to work on that project. And that, that's, you've, you've really, you've, you've hit it out of the park, you know. Um, uh, the good gardener uh, waters the root. Um, so if you, if you have a tree that, that some of the leaves are kind of blossoming on it or, or whatever, you don't, you don't water the, the leaves or the, the flowers coming out of the tree. You water the root, uh, and in watering the root, then more flowers grow. Um, and uh, we, we need to think more like gardeners, good gardeners, and uh, how we can water the root of uh, the ecosystem and, and support that so new things happen. Um, uh, we can't just... Uh, you know, try and find ways to support people who've already been successful, you know, because then it, it stands to reason that nobody else will ever be successful except for the people who've already been successful, and we, you know, give them jobs and do all this kind of thing, but, but, but fundamentally, we, we, we should actually try and think about, you know, if, if this is an artistic ecosystem and an artistic community, uh, we need to also support people who don't, or are not successful. Um, you know, maybe, maybe uh, uh, for every, every 10 people, somebody has a big project, but, but we need to, at the grassroots level, we need to think more about how we support everybody. Um, so, um, the, the, the final thing, um, we've been thinking a lot about this, uh, uh, this issue um, around, uh, you know, the, the um, feasibility economics around open source, and um, the, the, the biggest opportunity, I think, and it's an opportunity everybody here can help with, um, is, is for uh, the enterprise and people that have jobs or are in enterprise and stuff like that to start contributing back to open source projects. And um, this, is a, this is actually a logo um, uh, for the Inner Source Commons. Uh, it's a thing we've got involved in recently. So anyone, uh, my, my, my definition of Inner Source is that, um, you know, for, for the enterprise behind the firewall, uh, uh, we're, we're starting to bring practices from the open source communities into those, uh, those bigger organizations because it actually turns out the way that people collaborate building open source is much more efficient than the way people are building stuff in the enterprise. And, and so we're involved in this thing, Inner Source Commons, um, uh, where there's, there's like a, a library of, of, of organizational design patterns that you can apply then to making um, how 
uh, different groups and organizations can, can collaborate better on software and stuff like that. But we're, we got involved with this with a view to helping enterprise to start contributing back to open source projects. And uh, I think that's, that's the next step in terms of getting to that place where watering the route is like, let's try and grow the community, let's try and get the enterprise more involved um, and, and more aware of, of the value of what's going on, you know. Um, so um, I think Denise Cooper is around somewhere. Uh, she's not around there now. She'll be around later. Um, so if you see Denise or you want to talk about that stuff, Denise, will, Denise is the guru on, on this inner source thing. Um, but uh, yeah, um, I think that's kind of everything. I was going to kind of like blast it out on my, my thinking now. Um, uh, what I'd say, we'd say to everyone here is like, you know, you've got, you've got three days. Uh, you know, make good use out of it. Uh, look around you. Uh, there's just so much opportunity to make friends and learn things. And uh, in this in this hotel over the next couple of days, that uh, you know, I wish I wish everyone well here. And, and thank you very much for supporting the conference. So uh, I'll leave it at that. Thanks, guys.